Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. This week has us going back to Platinum Star Games in Howell, New Jersey, and Eric is playing his Jaya Ballard deck and keeps a hand with two mountains, Chandra Flamecaller, Mind's Eye, Rings of Bright Earth, Gauntlet of Power, and Mind Stone. Joe is playing his Multani deck and keeps a hand with Corsair of Crufix, Acidic Slime, Bane of Progress, Forest, Soul Ring, Burnished Heart, and Explosive Vegetation. John wants to take his Itali deck out for a spin and keeps a hand with Combat Celebrant, Mountain, Price of Progress, Wheel of Fate, and Thran Dynamo. Lastly, Liz is playing her Rashmi deck and keeps a hand with Thornwood Falls, Two Islands, Vanquisher's Banner, Sleep, Fencer's Journal, and Prime Speaker Zagana. Eric wins the die roll and starts us off. Eric plays a Mountain and passes. Joe plays a Forest and casts Soul Ring. John plays a Mountain for his turn and passes. Liz plays a Thornwood Falls, coming into play tapped, and gains one. Eric plays a Mountain and casts a Mind Stone before passing. Joe plays a Forest and casts Burnished Heart. John plays a Mountain and suspends a Wheel of Fate. Liz drops an Island and passes. Eric plays a Mountain and casts Rings of Bright Hearth. Joe plays a Forest and casts Explosive Vegetation. On his upkeep, John Down takes his wheel and draws a card. He's no land for turn, but does cast Generator Servant before passing to Liz. Liz plays an island and casts a Coral Helm Commander. She levels it up once and passes. Eric plays a mountain and casts his Gauntlet of Power, naming Red. Eric isn't super thrilled with the fact that John gets to benefit from it first, but he passes to Joe anyway. Joe wants to help Eric out though, so he casts Beast Within during his main phase and destroys the Gauntlet. With nothing else, Joe passes turn. On his upkeep, John down ticks his wheel and casts Swiftfoot Boots before passing. Liz plays her third island and casts Rashmi before passing to Eric. Eric plays a Nykthos, and Joe cracks his Burnished Heart to find two forests. Eric then casts his own Burnished Heart and swings the beast at John for three. Joe casts Zendikar Resurgence in his main phase because doubling mana is good. He then casts Corsair of Crufix, drawing from the Resurgence, and reveals a forest off the top. He plays a forest off the top and gains one life. Joe reveals another forest and passes turn. John down takes the wheel once more and plays a mountain. With nothing else, he passes to Liz. Liz plays her fourth island because forests are for chumps and casts a Vanquisher's Banner naming Merfolk. She reveals the top card to be a land and gets to put it into her hand thanks to the Rashmi trigger. She passes to Eric, who sacrifices his Burnished Heart at the end of her turn to find two mountains. Eric plays a mountain for his turn and casts Chandra Flamecaller. He uptakes Chandra, gaining two 3 1 elemental tokens with haste, and then casts Chaos Warp on Joe's Zendikar Resurgence. Joe floats four mana before it gets shuffled in and reveals Colony Heart Expedition. Eric then moves to combat and swings everything he can at Joe. Joe blocks one of the elemental tokens with his Corsair and takes six damage. With nothing else, Eric passes. Joe draws and reveals Garuk Primal Hunter. He then casts Bane of Progress in his main phase and destroys the board's enchantments and artifacts, giving his bane 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters once it's done. With nothing else, he passes to John. John removes the last counter from his wheel on his upkeep, and the table discards their hand and draws 7. Joe and Liz are a bit bummed out about this, but Eric and John are happy to draw new gas. John plays a mountain and sacrifices his generator to help pay for a tally. John then moves to combat and swings a tally at Chandra, and everyone reveals their top card. We get to see a Stryonic Resonator, a Platinum Imperion, and a Burnaway, as well as a land revealed, and John casts them, using Burnaway to kill Liz's Rashmi. Liz plays a Forest for her turn, and levels up her Korahelm Commander to 4. She then casts Miri's Guile, and moving to combat, swings her Merfolk at Eric. Eric plays a Mountain for his turn, and casts Braid of Fire in his main phase. Eric then brings out Pitchstone Wall, which I'd never ever heard of before that day, and then casts Dowsing Dagger. He gives Joe the plant defenders and equips the dagger onto his beast. Moving to combat, he swings it at Liz for 5. The dagger flips to reveal Lost Veil, vale, and in his second main phase, he casts Jaya Ballard and passes turn. Joe plays a forest and casts Elemental Resonance on his stolen Platinum Imperion. He then casts Howling Mine, and moving to combat, he hits Liz for 10 with his Bane of Progress. John draws 2 and plays a mountain, and moves straight to combat. He swings a tally at Eric, and copies the triggered ability of the Stryonic Resonator. The table reveals twice, and once more, Joe's deck seems to want to help John out more than him. He gets a Voidwinner, Combustible Gearhulk, 
Skargan Firebird, and True Name Nemesis. For the True Name Nemesis, he names Liz, and also has Liz choose whether or not he gets to draw the cards with the Combustible Gear Hulk. Liz decides to take one for the team, choosing to have him to mill. John reveals cards with 12 converted mana costs in total, and Liz takes 12 damage. We then move to the damage phase of the combat step, and Eric takes 6. With nothing else, John passes turn. Liz uses Miri's Guile and rearranges the top 3 to her liking. She then draws 2 and plays an island. Liz then casts Rancor, putting it on her Coral Helm commander. She wants to swing at John, but sadly the Imperion is going to mess with her plan, so she passes to Eric. On Eric's upkeep, he gains 1 red mana as part of the cumulative upkeep for Braid of Fire, and taps his Veil to help tap his Nykthos, floating further 5 red mana for a total of 7. He uses this mana to activate Jaya Balor's last ability, and discards Fiery Temper. This deals 6 damage to all creatures and all players, and Eric pays 1 to have Fiery Temper deal 3 to Void Winnower. Eric then pays 3 to bring back the Skargan Firebird and puts it back to his hand. While still in his upkeep, Eric finishes off the Imperion with a Punishing Fire, and finally moves to his draw step. Moving to his main phase, Eric plays a Temple of the False God, and taps out to cast an Avaricious Dragon before passing turn. Joe untaps and draws 2. He plays a Myriad Landscape and casts his Commander. Joe then casts Gaia's Touch, and moving to combat, he swings his bane at John. John draws 2 and plays a Mountain. He casts a Disrupt Decorum, but Liz saves the day by countering and exiling it with Void Shatter. John then follows up by casting a Blasphemous Act, and passes turn. Liz uses the Guile to rearrange the top 3, and then draws 2. She casts a Merfolk Sky Scout in her main phase, and passes turn. On Eric's upkeep, he gains 2 red mana, which he can use for nothing, and draws 2 in his draw step. He then recasts Jaya Ballard, and then brings out an Ashcloud Phoenix. Eric then destroys the Howling Mine with a Timely Vandal Blast, and passes to Joe. Joe only draws 1 per turn, and drops Garuk Primal Hunter. Joe then downticks his Walker to draw based on the power of Multani, which at this point is 18. Not bad for only 5 mana. Having drawn 18 cards, it's no real shocker when Joe plays a Reliquary Tower, and then he casts Silvala Stampede. Joe votes for free, while everyone else votes wild. Joe puts out the Greed Mortem Morassa for his free trigger, and then reveals Silvala Heart of the Wild, Nactal War Pride, and Soul of the Harvest for the free triggers. He returns the Stampede with the Green Warden trigger, and draws 3 from the Soul triggers. Joe then swings Multani at John, who dies to commander damage. Liz draws her turn, and tries to buy some good karma with Eric by casting an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. She then swings a Merfolk at Joe for 2, and untaps it with its own triggered ability. Eric draws her turn, and casts a Hedron Archive. He then recasts Jaya, and brings back the Ashcloud Phoenix and Braid before passing to Joe. Joe recasts Zendikar Resurgence in his main phase, and recasts Gaia's Touch. He then plays a Forest, and an additional one for the Touch ability. Joe then brings out Multani again, and draws from it, then casts Harrow, sacrificing one of the top forests to grab two untapped. Joe then casts Song of the Dryad on Jaya, and passes turn. Liz puts Rancor onto her Merfolk Scout, and then casts Urban Evolution. She draws three, and plays an island and a forest. Liz then casts a Master of Pearl Trident. She swings the Sky Scout at Joe for five, and untaps itself with its own trigger. Eric sacrifices his Archive in his main phase after a less than stellar draw. He draws two cards, and plays a Mountain, and casts Staff of Nin. He taps a D-1 to Joe, and brings back his Firebird to his hand. With nothing else, Eric passes turn. Joe untaps for turn, and plays two Forests during his first main phase. He then casts a Chroma's Memorial, which is basically pro-Eric. Joe then casts Silvala, drawing from the Resurgence, and activates her to gain 31 green mana for only one green. This is pretty absurd. Joe then casts a Nactal War Pride, drawing a card, Soul of New Phyrexia, drawing a card, Woodfall Primus, and draws a card, and then basically just dumps out more of his hand. He finishes off by casting Triumph of the Hordes, and the table realizes they're dying this combat step, and scoops it up. Game review time. So I don't think anyone was really expecting John to burst out of the gates like that, but it probably didn't hurt that he was able to get a bunch of really good spells by swinging Itali at Chandra the first time. I think the Platinum Imperion really sold it, and he was able to basically swing without having to worry about blocking at all. And while John was able to get back into the game thanks to the Wheel of Fate, I think it did double duty by really taking Liz out of the game and keeping her a really suboptimal hand. It didn't help that she also lost Vanquisher's Banner, which is a big draw engine in her deck. I was particularly impressed with Eric's upkeep turn, where he was able to do a ton of damage and basically wipe the board and deal 6 damage to everyone thanks to Jaya Ballard. 
He's since converted the deck into Felden, so it's a bit of a loss for us, but I'm at least glad that we were able to get to see it once on camera. Joe's Multani deck does two things, and two things really well, ramp and draw cards. And I think it was really a testament to his deck that he was able to recover so easily after each of the board wipes. It was also pretty incredible to see someone cast Garuk Primal Hunter, and then down tick it and draw more than five cards. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.